For about two years, I've been giving hot takes and pretty problematic opinions about every movie and TV show I've ever seen, so it's time to expose what kind of movie watcher I am. <clears throat> Hi y'all, Snarky J Cosplay here. I've spent a lot of time on this channel complaining about movies and content that I've watched, but I thought for this video, let's do something a little different. In this video, I am going to give you my top 10 favorite movies of all time, in no particular order except for the first one. Now before I get started, I do want to stress, this is not what I think are the 10 top movies of all time. These are my personal favorite. I'm not claiming to be a cinephile or a genius when it comes to film, so don't get all pissed off at me about some of these choices. I'm just saying these happen to be my favorites. If you disagree, that's your business. There's nothing to disagree with. This is my opinion. All right, let's get started. Number one, The Crow. This 1994 film starring Brandon Lee follows the story of musician Eric Draven, who, after being murdered alongside his fiance, comes back from the dead to get vengeance on the gang that killed them. I saw this movie when I was 11 years old, and I was most definitely too young to see it, but it changed my fucking life. The aesthetic is so 90s and so grunge, the soundtrack matches perfectly and is genuinely one of the best movie soundtracks I've ever heard. It's a dark superhero movie from before superhero movies were a dime a dozen. It's an amazing final performance by Brandon Lee, and it's honestly a movie that's equal parts disturbed and romantic that it really speaks to that little soft center in my cold dead heart. But all jokes aside, it's my favorite movie of all time. I watch it every year on my birthday, Valentine's Day, and Halloween, and I've never regretted even one viewing. Number two, Inglorious Bastards. This 2009 film by the legendary Quentin Tarantino is set in Nazi-occupied France during World War II, and it follows a plan to assassinate Nazi leaders by a vengeful theater owner and a group of Jewish US soldiers. In my opinion, this is one of, if not Tarantino's best film. The cast is absolutely stacked, the script is amazing, it opens with one of the single most tense scenes on the planet. I think Christoph Waltz puts on a brilliant performance as the big bad in this one. This movie is honestly one of those that, to me, has a little bit of everything, and every time I watch it, I discover a new detail about it, so it absolutely earned its spot on my top 10. Number three. Heat. Admittedly, my dad tried showing me this when I was like 14 and I was not interested. And last year we rewatched it and it's become one of my all time favorites. This 1995 film stars Robert De Niro and Al Pacino at their absolute best. It follows a group of professional thieves being tracked by the LAPD. You've got Robert De Niro playing the all too rare smart criminal and Pacino playing the desperate detective who'll stop at nothing to catch him. Not only is this film written in an absolutely brilliant way, the the action is also incredible. The famous bank heist scene inspired countless action scenes in tons of movies after it. The ending is so real and so satisfying that if you haven't seen Heat, I 100% recommend watching it. Number four, When Harry Met Sally. This is the only rom-com that's ever truly touched me. It's a 1989 film starring Meg Ryan and the fabulous Billy Crystal. It follows their friendship over the years through divorces and breakups and holidays holidays, all to the inevitable answer to the question, will they or won't they? Not only is the movie funny, but Meg Ryan and Billy Crystal are equally charming, but above all, as somebody who kind of hates rom-coms, this is one where the resolution of this movie feels earned, and you're 100% rooting for these two to eventually get together. Number 5, Ace Ventura, When Nature Calls. This is genuinely one of the funniest movies I've ever seen. The fact that it was released in 1995 means it's not really politically correct anymore, and if you ask Jim Carrey, he thinks it's the worst thing he's ever done, but I don't really care what he says. This sh is hilarious. It's the second Ace Ventura pet detective film, and we get to see Ace fly to Africa to track down the sacred animal of a tribe out there. Sure, most of the comedy in this movie is nonsensical. There's toilet humor, Ace Ventura talks with his butt cheeks, there's spit jokes, there is all kinds of just awful nonsense in this movie, but it is legit one of the funniest movies I've ever seen. I reference it all the time. I hate that about myself. But where else are you going to see Jim Carrey fall naked out of a rhinoceros? <laughs> 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 
number six, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. I genuinely feel this movie is so underrated, and as much as I like The Shining, this is my favorite of Jack Nicholson's roles. Released in 1975, this film follows a Korean War vet and criminal as he is admitted to a mental institution following a fake insanity plea, and he eventually rallies up the patients against a nurse that is basically a tyrant. I think Jack Nicholson is at his best in this. Every other actor delivers a stellar performance, including a very young Danny DeVito. I think every moment in this film is so worth watching and the ending packs a wallop that you're probably not going to expect, but really just ties the whole film together. Number seven, Toy Story. I kind of had a lot of animated films that I was tempted to include here, including Monsters, Inc. and Cars, but in the end, this work of art released in 1995 is what won out. Toy Story follows a cowboy doll who becomes increasingly jealous of his owner's new spaceman action figure, Buzz Lightyear. It's got the vocal talent of both Tom Hanks and Tim Allen, and the entire movie is absolutely hilarious and a little heartwarming. Toy Story is one of those films that I still enjoy watching to this day, not just for nostalgia purposes, it still genuinely makes me laugh. Maybe I'm a big dumb kid, who knows, but I think it's an absolutely brilliant movie. It's one of my favorites, and I had to include it on this list. Number eight, Whiplash. As a former band kid, I can accept that this is a profoundly biased choice. Released in 2014, Whiplash follows a talented young drummer at a top-rated music conservatory, being challenged at every turn by a music instructor that seems hell-bent on playing a drill sergeant instead. It's Miles Teller and J.K. Simmons in a battle of wills all throughout. It's absolutely a movie that was made with so much love for music, it's got amazing performances, a captivating script, and it very much feels so so true to the reality of being a musician that I really, really enjoy this one, and it's something that I enjoy re-watching yearly, both for the music and for just how good the film is. Number nine, La La Land. I feel like I'm losing any sense of cool I had with this one. Admittedly, I normally hate musicals, I'm not a romantic movie kind of girl, but this is one of those films that I have to watch when I need to feel something. Released in 2016, this dramatic musical follows a pianist and an actress in LA who struggle to balance their budget romance and their career goals all at once. It's Emma Stone and the incomparable Ryan Gosling in literally one of my all-time favorites and probably my guiltiest pleasure. The music is really good, the script is dramatic, it's one of those tugs at your heartstrings, and it's also visually really pretty. And number 10, Silence of the Lambs. The 90s were really peak for movies, and 1991's Silence of the Lambs is further proof of that. This one stars Jodie Foster as a young FBI cadet who has to team up with a cannibal serial killer played by the incredible Sir Anthony Hopkins in order to catch a serial killer by the name of Buffalo Bill. The horror slash thriller genre is mostly full of shit to be honest. It's so plagued by movies that aren't so good at scaring you as they are at just startling you. I don't like being startled, I want to be terrified. And that's one of those things that I really loved about Silence of the Lambs. Not only is the performance by Jodie Foster really good, but Anthony Hopkins, who normally feels like such a respectable gentleman in his other roles, is genuinely disturbing. He's the kind of guy that really instills fear, and this movie feels very grounded in reality, which is probably another reason that it's so terrifying. It's been one of my favorite movies since I was 14 and I couldn't leave it off this list. Well folks, in no particular order, those are my top 10 favorite films of all time. Again, I don't claim to be a cinephile that knows everything about movies. I'm not even gonna say that I have particularly good taste when it comes to movies, you know, based on the fact that I included Ace Ventura on this list. But these are movies that make me feel something, that inspire me, that make me laugh, that I just really enjoy. I hope you guys like this list and I would love to know what you think about my picks. And that's all from me. I've been Snarky J. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. For more Snarky J, be sure to check me out on Instagram. And if you would like to support my content creation while getting access to some exclusive photo shoot sets in the process, please be sure to check out and subscribe to my Patreon. I will add links to both in the description below and let me know your thoughts on my top 10 favorite movie picks in the comments below.